So guys, you can see <clears throat> probably that the snow is now officially taller than this good old seat. So we're now pretty much sitting in the snow. But anyways, as, before we get into this, as always guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan survival, EDC, and other gear related content. So let's get into this. So today I thought since my Benchmade 761, first production run 761 is back in now and I'm really happy about that. I really love this knife. I originally bought it to sell, but this is one of those knives that once I got it in my hand, I actually wanted one for a while. I'm like, man, I'm like, especially since this is a first production run, I'm like, man, I'm not sure about this. I really do like this knife. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it for a little while and see <clears throat> what I really think of it. It just came back from the factory or refurb so i sent this back to benchmade for a refurb and they re-blasted the titanium handles and everything and it looks almost like a brand new blade if you didn't have really good eyes this could easily mistake you as a brand new blade the box is a little beat up but the blade is just really really great i think they resharpened it i'm not sure it was really sharp when i got it but if they've resharpened it or whatnot it is really sharp it is really really sharp and really nice uh, <clears throat> but anyways so freshly factory refurbed Benchmade 761 and comparing it on the table I'm actually gonna put these just so you guys know we will put these not on the ice because the these knives tend to melt because they're metal handled they tend to actually melt into the ice and I don't really like that so I'm actually gonna set them on a little bit of a dry spot of the wood so sorry for the awkward positioning of this knife but I'm setting it on wood not ice so anyways then the one that needs to go back to the factory for a little bit of a refurb and a re bead blast and everything the my large Sabenza 21 in Singo grind and this one just actually needs to go back because it could use uh, the pocket clip has actually been bent out of shape a little bit and there's a handful of things especially another bead blast so this could use a spa day by Chris Reeves but I'm not sure if I'll send it back or not I'm kind of still debating it because I like to have it in the collection and I'm not sure but anyway so this is the good old my good old Chris Reeves knife Sabenza 21 large Sabenza 21 in Singo grind and what I wanted to do with this video as the title already gives away is I want to do a compare and contrast now I will say this year and I think last year too <clears throat> Chris Reeves knives they actually bumped the price of this knife up to $450 so this isn't an exactly equal comparison because this knife is a $400 knife so <clears throat> these knives are close but not exactly the same but for a long time there they were actually extremely close to the same price but regardless to that that might even actually be a better reason to do a comparison I wanted to do a comparison on basically what I feel and what a lot of people feel and think and kind of <clears throat> we all know is Benchmade's kind of take or their kind of nod to the Sabenza both of these are frame locks this is a true frame lock here the reeve integral lock <clears throat> and this is a mono lock as they call it and there is a little bit of a difference the primary difference between a mono lock and an integral lock like this is that the lock surface is circularly cut and so is the lock face or interface and so when the titanium lock bar comes over it's it's mating into a circular kind of divot cut in the steel as opposed to it just being an angle so if you think about it it's kind of like the <clears throat> the lock is locking into a like semi-circular kind of like this as opposed to with a traditional lock it's like a flat piece of metal like the actual lock on the Sebenza is a flat piece of metal interfacing with a sloped piece of metal on the steel so <clears throat> that's how a normal lock differs from the mono lock it's a little bit different sorry if that's complicated and you guys don't understand I get ya it's a little bit of a complicated thing but that's the basics to the mono lock versus the Cre uh, Reeve integral lock but they're really basically the same thing in form and in function they're really both just frame locks and it, they are both technically frame locks because a frame lock is a lock that exists from the frame of the knife so Yes, yeah, so technically this is a frame lock 
and so anyways <clears throat> regardless to how you slice it that they're basically very similar and so the about the only major difference between these two both of them if you guys will notice have single studs uh, the nice thing about the Benchmade is that it has a screw on the reverse side so if you are southpaw this knife is kind of funny because the pocket clip can only sit right here it doesn't have any other place where it can actually sit so if you are a southpaw you're still kind of screwed because the pocket clip isn't reversible but uh, <clears throat> the pot or the the thumb lug is technically reversible to the other side uh, I'm not sure how effective that really is because once again if you're southpaw you're also screwed because frame locks are designed to be really only for one side so basically this is a right side knife that wants to try to be appealing to left side users but it's really just a, a right side knife would not recommend it for left handers especially also with the Chris Reeves, unless you get a left-handed Chris Reeve Sabenza. <clears throat> but anyways, I'm gonna be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of both. And now that I actually have both of these pretty expensive titanium frame lock folders, I'm gonna be talking about what I think of each and having had each of them now, uh, which one I would buy if I could only buy one of these or if I was limited to just having one of these, if someone came to me tomorrow and was like, you need to sell one of these two knives, which one would it be? <clears throat> and honestly, it's harder than I originally thought. Originally, when I looked on YouTube land and I heard the reviews of the 761, which is what this knife is called. Um, this is the 761, not to be confused with the 765. The 765 is the smaller version of this, more comparable to the small Sabenza, but this is the big version you guys can see here. It's very similar in size. It's actually just a hair bit longer than the large Sabenza but it's harder than I thought. And the primary reason why it's harder than I thought is three primary reasons. One, actually the, the design of it, <clears throat> so long as you can get past that this is a tip down, which kind of sucks, but so long as you can get past that, it actually has a rather elegant look to it. Uh, one thing that I do really love about both of these knives is that both use a very understated and very non-flamboyant look and appeal to them they really aren't like trying to run out there be all flashy like some of my other knives are they're very understated very clean lines to them and they both look really elegant in my opinion <clears throat> And you'll definitely be able to tell, I'm not quite sure on camera, that this one looks significantly more worn. This one looks like it has a brand new stone wash finish, because it does. But um, <clears throat> aside from that, what I do like about the 761 is that it runs on ball bearings. One of the things you'll notice is that when this knife is flipped open like that, you guys can see that it almost wants to spring out of the handles. This knife is not spring driven whatsoever. You guys can see it has no springs in it whatsoever, but it really flies out of the handle and that's due to its uh, ball bearing system in the actual pivot so this does run on ball bearings uh, whereas this just runs on your normal phosphorus bronze washers so <clears throat> you can flick it out but you guys will notice here that with the other knife I just kind of had to kick it out like that with this knife I kind of have to flick it out with some force to get it out and that's because it's smooth it, it is very smooth but it is not on ball bearings so it doesn't fly out quite as fast in addition, the detent on this knife, the Sabenza, it's hard, but not as hard as on the 761. 761 has a pretty tough ball bear, or detent, sorry. So naturally when your thumb is building up pressure, like this, when it's putting pressure, putting pressure, putting pressure, and then it opens, <clears throat> it takes more force to do that. So that helps with the attribution of actually kicking the knife out and getting into its locked position. Then lastly, <clears throat> this is one thing I've kind of been debating with Sabenzas in the future that like, do I really like Sabenzas going forward? And that is the continued use of CPM S35VN. One of the things I really like about the 761 is it uses Bowler M6, M390, sorry, <clears throat> not M690, but M390 and I really love M390 and it's a very very nice performing steel very well 
keeps its edge very well. It's a really beloved steel in the EDC community because it's such a great performer. And there's nothing wrong with, with CPMS 35 VN. Uh, this is a great performing knife, by the way. Just like, it holds its edge very well, just as well as any other CP, CPMS 35 VN blade. But the thing is, with with Chris Reeves Sabenzas, they've had CPMS 35 VN for a very long time. And what's actually kind of sad is many knives, many commercial knives have either caught up <clears throat> and or exceeded the blade steel choice. I mean, we actually have now many Kaisers, many, um, <clears throat> many Kaisers, many Wii's, uh, many different Chinese made knives that use S35VN, um, like my one ZT0452 also uses it, and in fact the, the uh, ZT are actually upgrading their knife line this year by using uh, CPM20CV, so they're even stepping it up even higher than CPMS35VN, which is really putting these Sabenzas to shame. So I am curious to what uh, they're gonna jump to next when they do eventually jump. I know Sabenzas are generally a little bit slow when it comes to updating the material line, <clears throat> especially in blade steel, but I'm curious to see what they choose, but uh, that is one of the kind of the things, especially at least right now, that it's like, this Benchmade, at least in my opinion, M390, it's not a large step above CPMS 35VN, but it is better, and at least a little bit. And it, at least in my preference, this success is my own opinion. But that is a really attractive feature. And when you're going to spend, you know, around 400 plus dollars on a folder, an elegant high-end folder like these, you want to really choose the one that has the, a great performance, great looks, great action, great everything. And <clears throat> the, both of these do have a lot of that. I will say one thing that I do personally love about the uh, Sabenza a little bit more is the subtle touches of color. If you guys will notice, hopefully you guys can see it, but if not, you guys are probably familiar with Sabenzas if you're watching this video, that it has little blue bits all over the place, blue bits of titanium, anodized titanium on the thumb stud or thumb lug. And you also have one for the lanyard hole back here. And you have one back in here as well for the standoff. And so just little splashes of blue everywhere. I really like that because the thing is, and I will say with this one, it's really evident that when you have a knife that's gray and it's standoffs and stuff like that is all silver. So it's gray and silver. It looks nice, but I kind of... There's something like, it's, it's leaving me wanting just a little bit of color because there's so much bland to this knife that that's a little bit unattractive. And once again, when you're going for such an expensive knife, you want something that's attractive to your eyes. You want something that has good performance, good action, and also very attractive. And so I will say, <clears throat> as far as performance and action, or I think quality and action, these both are pretty similar, but I have to give the edge in both of those to the 761. But as far as attractiveness goes, there's nothing like a Chris Reeves Sabenza. And I think the, th the fourth thing that when you go for this expensive of a knife you want is credibility or kind of name. And so, like for me, when I pull out a Benchmade 761, it's just another Benchmade knife. People look at this and they're like, oh, it's it's a Benchmade knife, really cool. You know, I mean, people know Benchmades are really high quality and nice knives, but it's just a Benchmade. Whereas when you pull out a Sabenza, like people's, I mean, knife people, like you just pull it out in front of anyone, someone probably won't know, but if, if people are in the know about the knife world and you pull out a Sabenza, people are gonna be like, whoa, you know, that knife has a lot of credence, it has a lot of, <clears throat> has a lot of presence because it is a Sabenza. It is a really, you know, high-end knife. People automatically know that this thing is very expensive because the cheapest Sabenza, the Sabenzas by Chris Reeves are in the $400 or at least, I think you can probably find some used small Sabenzas for 200, but if you bought a large Sabenza, you're pretty much talking the $400 range. So you pretty much are just like, wow, people are gonna be like, whoa, you know, that's a really nice knife, I really like that. 
And so <clears throat> that it does have a nice kind of credibility or credence to it when you pull it out. It, it looks special, it is special. It, it has that nice name to it. So that is one big advantage if you're going for that because there are quite a few people out there that don't mind shelling out big bucks for a really great user knife and they don't care about the cool factor that is in the knife. And so if, if you're one of those people that doesn't care about the cool factor, once again, I think the 761 is a superior knife for you. But if you like aesthetics and <clears throat> you like customizability, and you like that kind of name, that presence, that kind of stigma to it, then I think the Sabenza is a superior knife for you. As going back to the original question, because I am going to answer it here on the video, which one of these two, now having both in my collection, in my hands, which one would I choose if I could, you know, like just, just have one of these, if I had to sell one of these and uh, I had to get rid of it, I would probably end up keeping the Sabenza just for the fact that, once again, I like, I have a lot of knives that are really high-end, kind of cheaper knives, and this is just personally speaking about me, that I have $200 knives, and I know that's like cheap, those are pretty expensive, and they are pretty expensive, but when we're talking $400 knives, I can buy two $200 knives for the price of just this one knife or actually even more because this is like a $450 knife. So I could buy two $250, $225 knives for just the price of this one. So it's like, you know, it is kind of cheaper. So, you know, I have other cheaper knives that kind of, they look cool and they have a lot of performance to them. But the, the Sabenza is a really special knife. I also like the ergonomics just a little bit more. Both look great as far as appealing and how they've milled titanium, but the feeling ultimately of the Sabenza is a little bit better. I like it just a little bit more. The one thing I will say I don't like, or what I kind of wish Sabenza would do differently, is they still use a kind of cheap, and I say cheap, it still is probably really expensive because it is titanium, but they use a bent titanium clip Whereas with the Sabenza, or sorry, Sabenza 761, they actually use a milled titanium clip. And the difference between a milled and <clears throat> a bent titanium is the whole fact that if you notice, one of these two knives, well, you guys probably won't be able to see from here, but one of these two knives clips is bent, and that is this one. And that is naturally, that naturally happens, because when you bend a piece of metal, it kind of gets used to being bent. <clears throat> so naturally, your pocket clip can bend out, and I really don't like that. That is probably my biggest hit on the Sabenza, is that I really wish they would go over to milled clips, because milled clips tend to be more rigid, more stiff and once again because the steel or the not necessarily steel but because the metal has never been bent before it's not used to bending so it has a far far less prop far less higher probability of bending out and you know it's a lot more rigid and this is speaking from the fact that I've owned several knives now with milled titanium clips and none of them ever bent out on me whereas I have owned a lot of knives that have bent pocket clips like this and most of them have bent out on me so <clears throat> take that for what you will but I still would end up going to the Sabenza. Another reason why I would go to the Sabenza is the customizability and aftermarket for Sabenzas because I can actually go and get other pocket clips. I can really tweak these knives and <clears throat> really get the level of uniqueness that I want in this knife because this is just another bench made there's really no aftermarket for these knives there is a small aftermarket for it but overall with the 761 there really is no aftermarket with this knife if you like what you get out of this knife then that's just fine but if you're one of those people that likes to tweak your knife really personalize it then this is probably not the knife for you because like I said since this is just another bench made in the lineup of bench maids then it's not really as special whereas this in fairness this is just another Chris Reeves in the family of Chris Reeves but the Sabenza is a little bit more than just another Chris Reeves knife knives knife <clears throat> it is actually its own kind of unique person in the lineup and it has a large following a large <clears throat> aftermarket 
to it so you can get different pocket clips you can get different things on these you can also from factory get them customized you can get dual thumb lugs you can get left-handed versions of these knives and stuff like that so anyways guys that's all for now god bless and i'm out